has already shattered marks of Notre Dame legends Red Salmon, George Gippen. Hi, everybody. I'm Harry Callis, along with former Ram All-Pro Jack Snow and former Chicago Bear All-Pro George Conner. We're at Waikiki Beach, the very hub of activity in Hawaii, and what a tremendous matchup for the third annual Aloha Bowl. The 17th-ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, the 10th-ranked Mustangs of SMU. George, how about Notre Dame? Annual Aloha Bowl. The officials are all from the Big A's conference. Referee is Vance Carlson. The weather is perfect this afternoon, 77 degrees. Wind not much of a factor. Trade winds at 12 miles per hour. And doing the kicking is going to be Tomas Esteve, a junior from Brownsville, Texas for SMU. The deep men for Notre Dame are Tim Brown along with Alonzo Jefferson. And the third annual Aloha Bowl is underway as Esteve gets the kickoff for Tim Brown in the end zone. Brown is going to return it two yards deep. Tim Brown some blocking. Brown up to the 30, knocked out of bounds on the sideline. At the 35-yard line by Darrell Reese, first down, Notre Dame. Well, Timmy Brown started out his career this year against Purdue, and he fumbled the opening kickoff, and Purdue recovered, and they went on to score three points, but not this time. Timmy Brown got a good return before Reese threw him out. There we see the officials for this afternoon's Aloha Bowl game, all of them from the Big A Conference. First and 10, Notre Dame. They have the ball at the 35-yard line, their own 35, after a fine return by freshman Tim Brown. Notre Dame offensively, you see the kind of numbers they have put up this season. Points 25.4, and they have had more passing yards than rushing, which is unusual for Notre Dame. Steve Berline is the sophomore quarterback for the Fighting Irish. Chris Smith and Alan Pinkett are the running backs behind Berline. Play action. Berline going to put it up in the air. Little screen. He has Chris Smith to the 40, up to the 45. First down. He's upended at the 46 yard line by Keith Brooks. It'll be first down, Notre Dame, a screen on the first offensive play. Well, Larry Williams, 75, gets out. Steve bumps his man, and then he gets out in front. Watch number 75, and he puts a block on T.D. Briggs. There you see the block on Roderick Jones there. And good yardage on the opening play of pass. First and 10, Notre Dame. They have it at their own 46-yard line. Berline calls the signals for the Irish. Seven and four. Alan Pinkett, his first carry. Gets a couple, and that's about all to the 48-yard line. Alan Pinkett was the ball carrier. Not a whole lot of running room. Pick. He's the leading rusher, of course, for Notre Dame. The All-American junior tailback as we look at the... Offensive skill positions, leading receiver is Mark Favaro. The offensive line averaging 6'5 and 272 and a half pounds per man. It'll be a second down and seven call. Give Pinkett three yards. The ball at the 49, their own 49. Alan Pinkett trying to get outside. Does inside SMU territory for the 45 of SMU before Keith Brooks makes the hit. But Pinkett picks up six yards. It'll be third and one. Defensively for SMU, the player to watch on the defensive line, Jerry Ball. He led the Mustangs in tackles with 97. The linebackers are not real big. They're very quick, led by outside linebacker Anthony Beverly. And the defensive secondary also has great quickness. Third down and one call facing Burline. They have the ball at the SMU 45-yard line. They'll operate from the power eye as Mark Brooks is coming in an extra fullback. Alan Pink at first down and then some. Inside the Mustang 40 to the 38-yard line of SMU. Finally dragged down by nose guard Jerry Ball. And Alan Pinkett ran right behind his two big fullbacks, Chris Brown and Mark Brooks. And they got a good block on Roderick Jones, who is only six foot, 164. They got him to the outside right there. And Pinkett picked up the yardage for the first down. Shows you Jerry Ball's lateral pursuit. The nose guard made a up field. First and 10 of the 38-yard line of SMU. Pass to Joe Howard in and out of his grasp. Depending on the play, Reggie Phillips for SMU. 
It'll be second down and 10 Notre Dame. They have it at the Mustang 38 yard line. We're in the first quarter. 1244 remaining to be played in the first quarter. Nothing nothing Notre Dame taking the opening kickoff and they have moved it to the Mustang 38 yard line. Harry, we're talking about the defense for SMU. They play what we call a 34 defense. That's three down linemen and four linebackers. The ball is very active in there. The object of the down linemen is to keep the linemen, the offensive linemen from getting to the linebackers. Keep them free there in the middle. Let them go back and forth side to side and make the, make a lot of tackles. Second down and 10 call for Burleigh. Hand off pink and a gaping hole. Allen pink it inside the 30 to the 28. He's very close to a first down. He was finally brought down by T.D. Briggs along with Tim Green. Tim Scannell, the offensive left guard, 54, gets a big block on Kit Case. They're going to the outside. They're going to the side where Joe Phillips is, the 6'4", 280-pound defensive tackle. He does not have the speed to the outside. You see him when he's way in over the middle. There's the good block. And Pinkett, with good speed, tries to go to the outside, cuts up, and another first down. Pinkett, 26 yards on four carries. Gets the call again, runs into his offensive lineman, runs into another offensive lineman, and then runs into blue SMU jerseys, and he is stopped for no game. It'll be a second down, and, well, they'll give him a yard on the play. It'll be a second down and nine call for Burleigh. D.D. Briggs calling the defensive signals. Number 34 is Jerry Ball, who led SMU in tackles. He also had 15 in tackles for losses and four sacks. Very rare for a nose guard to lead a team in tackles. Well, and he pushed Mike Kelly, the big offensive center back for Notre Dame, about three yards and stacked up that last play. Second down and nine. Hand off Pinkett. Pinkett dies inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by a about a yard. Finally stopped by T.D. Briggs. It'll be third down and one for Notre Dame. Notre Dame getting off the ball very, very well. There's Chris Smith coming up the middle. There he gets a block on 44. Pinkett can pick his holes. He likes to run behind that big offensive line. He's only 5'9". He hides behind him. He picks his hole and turns on a burst of speed. Bobby Collins, Mustang coach, looking on on a third down and a long one for Notre Dame at the 19-yard line of SMU. Chris Smith in motion. That's a block from Brooks, but a fine defensive play by blitzing free safety Jim Green of SMU. Stopping Pinkett for a loss, and Notre Dame will bring on the field goal unit. Show you the speed of Tim Green. He came from the offside and caught Pinkett from behind. John Carney has had an outstanding year as the field goal kicker for at Notre Dame. 17 for 19. As long a 48-yarder, this will be a 37-yard attempt. Mike Viracola will hold. Kevin Kelly will snap. Ball is spotted. Carney's kick is certainly long enough, and it is wide, however, wide to the right, and not good at Notre Dame after an impressive drive. Comes up with no points. A timeout of the action with a score. Notre Dame nothing, SMU nothing. We'll be back right after this. Quarter nothing, nothing. Notre Dame's drive halted as Carney misses a 37-yard field goal. SMU offensively, you see their numbers. Their quarterback is Don King. Junior All-Southwest Conference selection. King's going to put it in the air on the very first down. Wide open up the middle to the 30. Stumbling to the 40. Yard line and SMU first down. It's a great call by Bobby Collins coming out of the shoot first down. It's going to be a little rollout play action right here. Now you watch number eight, Hashway. He's going to sit in there, hold up three counts, and release right across the middle. And there he is. All the linebackers from Notre Dame have dropped deep to cover downfield. Defensive backs are chasing going into his zone. Hashway, nice catch. Look at it again right here. Good job by Don King here for Hashway, but it comes at a very opportune time. Don't use their fullbacks that much, but they did there. Here's the brilliant tailback, Reggie Dupard, for a first down SMU at the 43-yard line of Notre Dame, a gain of 11. Reggie Dupard, there you see the backs and receivers for SMU. Reggie Dupard, of course, is their leader. He rushed for 1,160 yards and 16 rushing touchdowns. The line is as big as Notre Dame, 6'5", 272, they average. It'll be first and 10 SMU at the 43-yard line. Here's Dupard again, and Dupard is stacked up by the outside linebacker. 
Robert Banks. There you see the defense led by Mike Gamm, fine defensive lineman for Notre Dame. Linebackers Mike Kovaleski, the leading tackler, and Mike Larkin, a big play man. And the defense is secondary, led by tri captain Joe Johnson. Reggie Dupart on the last carry had to leave the game. He left limping. Might be a factor as we look at Jerry Faust, Jeff Atkins, part of the dual tailback system taking his place. King rolling out, looking upfield, way over the head of his intended receiver. His intended receiver was Marquise Pleasant, the split end of sophomore. It'll be third down and an eighth call for SMU at the Notre Dame 43-yard line. 41-yard. Look at Jim Higgins right there. Here. He's going over the offensive line, some adjustments on how to handle those linebackers because of their quickness. Jeff Jacobs is coming into the split end spot for SMU. He goes wide to the left, wide to the right is Ron Morris. Hashaway and Atkins are the running backs for SMU on a third down and nine call. Play action. A lot of times. Screen to Atkins. Atkins inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. First down, SMU. A well-devised screen by the Mustang. Another great call by Bobby Collins. He's going to take advantage of that big rush of Notre Dame front four. They're down line. We'll watch it right here. He's going to take a little boom, little flick of the fullback in there. You're going to drop back country. Now watch the line move to your left right there. You're going to see 51. It's going to get a great block. Also number 67 in there, Andrew Campbell. That big 32, Jeff Atkins just sets right under behind him. Heads up field. Gets those shoulders going north and south. Good running. Good play call. Finally brought down at the 25-yard line of Notre Dame. First and 10 SMU. Here's a pitch back to Atkins. Stopped in his tracks by Pat Valley. 21-yard line after a pickup of around four by Jeff Atkins, a sophomore tailback. Well, Ballage played off his blocker very well. He kept him under control and made up a made came up and made a good tackle on Atkins. Here's Reggie Dupard, who rushed for 1,160 yards, had to leave the field after his last carry replaced by Atkins, but he appears to be all right. They're going to check him out, and if there's any need, they'll, they'll retape that ankle for him, get him back in there full strength. It's a second down and six call for SMU and Don King. King handoff to Atkins. Atkins bounces his way to the 13-yard line of first down SMU. Part of that very effective dual tailback system, Jeff Atkins and Reggie Dupard. Watch Atkins right here now. He's looking. He's looking for the block. He's going to come in there, boom, jump in there. Watch him keep going. He makes a good spin. Good backs do that. Keep their feet moving. Keep their... He gets stuck in the ground because that's how you get knee injuries. Atkins does a good job. He's averaging five yards a carry, so he's also an outstanding back for SMU. See Notre Dame defensively, they are 12th in the nation in pass defense. It's the first and 10 SMU at the 13-yard line. Inside handoff, Kobe Morris is the pullback. Morrison, just a freshman from Dallas, Texas, and he gets to the 10-yard line to pick up. will be second down, seven SMU. Both teams impressive drives in their first possession. Notre Dame coming up short on a missed 37 yard field goal. SMU at the Irish 10 yard line. And Bobby Collins throwing to Hashaway and Morrison early in the game. They both only caught two passes going into the game. Second down, seven call for Don King. Here's Atkins. Atkins gets a grudging two or three yards before he's stacked up at around the seven yard line. Getting up off the bottom of the pile, Mike Kovaleski along with Tony Perjanic. Ball spotted at the seven, where it'll bring out a third down and a long four. Jeff Jacobs comes in with a play from the bench. Marquise Pleasant comes out for SMU. Jerry Faust in his fourth year at Notre Dame. His second straight bowl game, having won the Liberty Bowl. Last year. Big third down call, option play. Atkins running outside, touchdown SMU. A pitch back from Don King to Jeff Atkins, who have six rushing touchdowns during the season. Atkins, a sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas. You watch Don King run here. Now, this is what he does so well. It's the option, come down, draw the defensive man in. Now, what happens, he's a good block here from 88 Albert Reese. That's the key when you run that option. You got to get a good block on that defensive end, force that linebacker to cover the quarterback, and then pitch that ball out to your tailback. Grant, great execution. Excuse me, Harry. That's great execution by SMU. Randy Brownlee will attempt the extra point. Dodge Carter to hold. Snap is good. The kick is in the air, and it is good. And SMU is 
scored first in the third annual Aloha Bowl. There's a timeout of the action with the score, SMU 7, Notre Dame nothing. We'll be back right after this. Seven. We get on the first quarter. We want to remind you that the broadcast cable cast rights to this game are granted by the Aloha Bowl Committee to TCS Metro Sports. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without written consent is prohibited. The announcers on this telecast have been hired and paid for by TCS Metro Sports in consultation with the Aloha Bowl Committee. Tomas Esteve will kick off again for SMU, the deep men for Notre Dame. Tim Brown on the far side, Alonzo Jefferson on the near side as we look at the SMU scoring drive. We got 78 yards, 10 plays, four minutes. That's good ball control. They started the game off with the pass like we thought they would or like Collins had talked about, but what got him in the end zone? That option. Keep option coming. play got him in the end zone. They use their fullbacks. That's right, exactly. They use those. Great job, great game plan so far for SMU. There's Alonzo Jefferson, one of the deep men for Notre Dame. Timmy Brown, the other one. And Tomas Esteve to kick off. Report on Reggie Dupard, who had to leave the game. He has a slightly sprained left ankle. He is expected to return to the game. With that dual tailback system of SMU, you really don't miss too much when one of them leaves the game as Jeff Atkins so aptly displayed in the first SMU drive. 7-0 Mustangs. Esteve yeah. comes down on the ball. Driving kickoff. This will not be run back. Play after the kickoff, trailing 7 0 is Esteve a good kickoff. Let's watch his uh, touchdown here again now on Atkins. Watch King as he comes down the line. His timing has got to be perfect, which it is. He flips that ball out there. You get a block on the linebacker from Notre Dame on the left side. Now it's a foot race to the corner, puts his head down and gets inside there. Good job of running. Ball was kicked outside the end zone, so Notre Dame will start first and 10 at their own 30 yard line. Berline has Chris Smith and Alan Pinkett is his running backs. On a first and ten for their own 30, trailing 7-0. 607 to play, first quarter. Play action. Drills it up the middle to Joe Howard. Small wonder a first down at the 46-yard line of Notre Dame. He was stopped by Tim Green. Berline was very patient on that pass play. He waited, he waited, he faked play action. That's the second time now Notre Dame has passed on the first first down from the end zone. Pinkett faking up the middle, faking a screen there. He waited for Small Wonder to hit the middle in a good pass and reception. Pick up a 16, first and 10 Notre Dame. They have it at their own 46-yard line. 7-0 SMU, first quarter of the Aloha Bowl. Allen Pinkett out of this direction has some running room over the 50 in the SMU territory to the 48-yard line before Kit Case and Reggie Phillips finally drop him. But substantial yardage picked up by Allen Pinkett. He reels off six. It'll bring out a second down and four. SM, SMU's the defensive uh, coordinator, Bill Clay, has got him pegged pretty good, has Notre Dame's offense, because he's gone into a zone defense, a double zone where the corners roll up. Both times in first down and ball possessions. Excellent job to put that corner in there to make a good tackle. Wide outs are freshman Reggie Ward on the right. On the left is Tim Brown. Back to throw Burline. Good protection. Now it closes on him. He can run the ball, and he's going to run the ball for a first down. Ball pops loose. And it was blown down at the 36-yard line of SMU. Ron Anderson making the tackle. Ball popped loose, but it was blown dead as Berline rushes for a first down of the Mustang 36. Well, Berline has plenty of time here, plenty of time. He gets a little rush there. He gets to the outside. He might throw it uh, there to pink it, but there's two men covering. I said at the top of the show, he's not noted for his running, but he ran very well there and got a first down before the ball was blown dead. First and Tad Irish, they have it at the 36-yard line of SMU. Berline calling the signals. Milt Jackson is into the wideout. Berline going to throw. He wants Milt Jackson deep, and he overshoots his intended receiver, Milt Jackson, who 
was well defended on the play by Reggie Phillips, the right cornerback, a senior from Houston, Texas. Early second and ten, Notre Dame. Good coverage by number five, Reggie Phillips, because he's the one who's responsible for that play. He forced the receiver inside, Milt inside. Milt wanted to run a corner route, and that's where Burline threw it, but unfortunately he couldn't get it to him. Second down and ten, Notre Dame at the SMU 36-yard line. Brown is wide to the left. Reggie Ward is wide to the right. Chris Smith and Alan Fick at the running backs. They're line calling the signals. Alan Fink against the handoff. Alan Fink at inside the 35 to the 33 or 32-yard line before he is dropped. Brought down by Briggs. Watch Jerry Ball here now. He's playing the nose Jerry for Ball. Yeah, he's right there. They're doing a good job. Larry Williams, as you can see, keeps him up, keeps him out of the play. He comes in there late and does make the tackle. Now, Ball's, what he's been doing, what SMU has been doing with Jerry Ball, they've been playing him on the head on the center. They've been playing him in an offset position, over the guard one play, over the guard the other play. They don't want anybody to get a reading on him. Maybe take two guys, double team him, and keep him out of the backfield. So far, Larry Williams has done a good job negating Jerry Ball. Third down call for Burline. Hit from behind by Anthony Beverly, the big play man for SMU. Is sacked back at the 37. Brings out a fourth down and 11. Kit Case, one of the linebacker, comes over the top and he gets blocked. But then Anthony Beverly leaves the team in tackles with 60. Comes from the outside and behind and sacks Furline. Mike Veracolo will be called in to pot. He's a senior from Dallas, Texas. Veracolo, grad student at Notre Dame. but it goes into the end zone. He was trying to drop it inside the 10, but did not execute it that way. And the ball will go to SMU on their 20-yard line, a 36-yard punt. There's a timeout of the action at the Aloha Bowl with the score, SMU 7, Notre Dame nothing. We'll be back right after this. Twenty yard line. King inside handoff to his fullback, Kobe Morrison. Very little there. Morrison gets about a yard, not much more. Mike Gann in on the bottom of the pile for Notre Dame. Morrison is only a freshman, 5'11, 203 pounds out of Dallas, Texas. There are a lot of Dallas players. 23 of them on Bobby Collins' squad, including 11 from Highland Park High School. Second down a nine call for King. Again, the fullback, Kobe Morrison, gets over the 25 to the 26-yard line where he's piled up with the 26. Robert Banks, one of the linebackers, in on the bottom of the pile, along with Mike Gann again. We'll bring out a third down and four call for the Mustang. Marquise Pleasant comes in at a wide receiver spot. Jeff Jacobs comes out for SMU. Reggie Dupard, who was injured early in the game, coming back from the SMU dressing room and appears to be all right and probably will return to action. Third down and four call for SMU. Here's Atkins. Atkins hit by Banks, but he still gets a first down over the 30 to the 31-yard line. Atkins, with good effort, set a Southwest Conference freshman record for rushing by a freshman, 973 yards. You watch Atkins here. Now, he's just looking for a little seam. All he wants to do is find a seam and pop it, which he does, right in there behind Chris Jackson, Andrew Campbell, and Mike Edson, the three big, two big guards in the big center for SMU. Nothing spectacular in this whole series so far, just straight-ahead football. Pop, 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 pop. Five carries, 27 yards for Atkins, including a touchdown. King's going to throw, and he undershoots his intended receiver. He wanted Ron Morris, but threw it short of Morris. It'll be a second down and 10 call for SMU from their own 31. But Pat Ballage had Ron Morris covered very well, and I think uh, King, the quarterback, was afraid of an interception. He threw the ball into the ground intentionally. So it'll be a second down and 10 call for King. We have a minute 31 left to play in the first quarter. SMU leading 7 to nothing. from all over the country here for the third annual Aloha Bowl. King, pitch back to Atkins. Atkins up over the 40 to the 42-yard line. He has a first down on a pickup of 10 by Jeff Atkins. 
again the app option play well directed by quarterback Don King watch it again here now King's doing coming here he's gonna start right down the line of scrimmage his tailback he always knows where Atkins is in he flips it out good blocking there by SMU they get that linebacker down once you do that it makes it very very tough on the defense that linebacker for Notre Dame Banks I believe it he's got to force that ball a little bit quicker to take on that blocker great block by the tight end Albert Reese It'll be first and 10 SMU at their own 41-yard line. Mustangs lead 7-0. King rolling out, looking upfield, going for the bundle. It is incomplete, a penalty marker down on the play. It'll be a penalty on Pat Ballage. Interference against Ron Morris, the sophomore flanker. So Ballage is going to be called for interference. Under the new college rule, since the pass went more than 15 yards, the penalty will not carry all the way to the point of the interference, but instead it will be marked off as 15 yards to the Notre Dame 44-yard line. It's a new college rule this year, and it's the first time we've seen it called. So you see right, you just saw Bally just pops in right there and knocks Morris out of bounds. You can't do that. The one thing I notice Bally does when he's covering deep is he never turns around to find the ball. You keep your eyes on that receiver. Sometimes it's difficult because you don't know where the ball is. And in an inadvertent bump, and you got a flag right now, and there's a perfect example of it. First and 10 SMU at the 44-yard line of Notre Dame. Mustangs lead by a score of 7 nothing in motion. Albert Reese, the tight end, now he sets up on the other side the option. Here's Atkins. Gets a great block again. Pulls his way over Ballage and inside the 33 to the 32 and there's a penalty marker down on the play. Boy, that was a great effort. He carried Ballage about three, four yards after the initial hit. He did. I'll tell you who else made a great block. It was number 23, Ron Morris from his outside receiver position. He came back inside and cracked in on one of those big Notre Dame linebackers and knocked him down hard. Let's pick up the penalty. You watch Kowaleski 49. Now what's going to happen is Morris is going to come right down the line right there. Wapo, bang. He just gets his attention real quick. I think that's Reese making the block there, but also Morris comes in up at the top and takes one of the defenders for Notre Dame down. That's what creates the seam in there. Great execution by the Mustangs. A penalty against SMU. Well, 88 Albert Reese, who's been a, a Trojan out there blocking. The hand on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Down remains the same. First down. Five-yard penalty from the point of infraction. The down remains the same, so the ball is at the Notre Dame 38-yard line. Jerry Faust wants an explanation of the call. They move the yardstick to the 38. Down remains the same. So it happened at the point of the infraction, and SMU ends up getting six yards total on the play, bringing up a first and four. Not bad. It's a pretty good situation <laughs> to be in here. You'd like to have that first down and four. All you, so many things you can do with it. Leach, the miracle man for SMU, is into the wideout. He is wide to the left. King inside hand off to his fullback Hashaway, and he drives close to the first down of the Notre Dame 33 yard line. Hashaway, 5'11, 194 pound junior from Pittsburgh, Texas. It's going to be a little bit short. It's going to be second and less than one. This is a great play action down. You can do so many things from here. Fake that fullback into the line. Fake your option down the line. Step back and throw that ball. Bring in Ron Morris, who averages 20 and 5 tenths yards per catch at a wideout spot. Third in career yardage at SMU behind only Emmanuel Tolbert and Jerry Levias. They're going to go for the first down, and they get it easily on the inside handoff to the Notre Dame 32-yard line. First and 10 SMU at the Irish 32. The Mustangs lead 7-0 with seconds remaining in the first quarter at the third annual Aloha Bowl. 10th ranked, the Mustangs of SMU. 17th rated, the Irish of Notre Dame. SMU is going to let the clock run down to end the first quarter, and they'll start first and 10 when the second quarter begins from the Notre Dame 31 and a half yard line. So that's the end of the first quarter of action at the third annual Aloha Bowl. The score, SMU 7, Notre Dame nothing. We'll be back right after this. Notre Dame 7 to nothing. 
Harry Callis with George Connor and Jack Snow. It'll be first and ten for SMU. The Irish 31 as we look at the yards gained in the first quarter. The Mustangs 117. Notre Dame 77. Here's the option play. There's Atkins, and Atkins has just set an Aloha Bowl record already in the game for most yards rushing in the Aloha Bowl. It was previously held by Jack Robinson of Washington in 1982. Atkins reeling off eight yards on this option play. Watch it again here now. Here he comes down the line with the option. The key here at 23, Ron Morris outside blocks on Bally's, and it allows Atkins to jump up inside the hole. That's tough. Notre Dame has got to do a better job of forcing that, getting rid of the ball, and coming up quicker to stop that pitch. Atkins with an Aloha Bowl record gets the call again, and Atkins runs outside. He's dropped at the 21, but he appears to have the necessary two yards for the first down. Reggie Dupart injured early. Yeah, Mike Gann uh, playing the whole game. Notre Dame, Notre Dame substituting on defense. Watch him play off a blocker. He's strong. He comes back in, but he's taken to the outside, and he gets into the tackle. Along with Rick DiBernardo. It's a first and ten, however, for SMU. They have it at the Notre Dame 21-yard line. Pleasant is wide to the left, and wide to the right is David Adamson, a sophomore from Dallas. First and ten Mustangs of the 21 of Notre Dame. There was a little movement. Here's a pitch back and a juggle by Atkins. He wisely covers the ball at the 29-yard line. A loss on the play of eight yards. Jerry, I think he just lost the Hula Bowl rushing record. Let's watch right. it. Or Aloha Bowl, I'm sorry. Let's watch it right here. He's now watching the ball all the way, and he never gets a handle. He has it there, but he never has control of the ball. Big pursuit. Here comes Gann, big 78 coming in. He's going to pounce on him. Smart thing, though, that Atkins does. He does fall on the ball. Don't try to pick it up. I think it was a bad pitch, Jack. It didn't look like uh, it was uh, in the end of the hands there. Wasn't too bad, George. What happened, though, is that you get so used to taking that pitch from, from your quarterback as you wind up taking it without really looking at it or honing in on it. And I think that's what happened that time. Atkins really didn't hone in on it. Second down, 18 for SMU at the 29-yard line of Notre Dame. Back to throw King. Lost it way over the head of Atkins as intended receiver. And it'll be a third down and 19 for the Mustang. Well, Eric Dorsey's in there at nose guard, and he played off. He was looking for uh, the back coming out of the backfield, Atkins, and he had him covered. In passing there, you see his season stats in the Aloha Bowl. He's three for five for 40 yards. SMU leading 7-0, 13 to play in the first half. On a third down and 19, or rather 18, call for Don King. King straight back again, has some time. Over the middle, wide open as Ron Moore is inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It's first down and goal, SMU. It's a great pitch and catch, great route, nice throw. Notre Dame was in a zone defense, nothing spectacular. There's Ron Moore's 23. You're going to see Steve Lawrence, who's playing free safety for, the, for Notre Dame, number 23. He's deep in the hole. Morris is going to come from the right side of your screen. There's a big vacancy right in there. It's a good pass by King, who lays it over the linebackers and in front of the secondary. First down, goal to go, SMU. The Mustangs leading 7 to nothing, and they operate from the power eye. On the option play, what a bone-jarring hit. It's covered by Atkins, but he's thrown for a big loss back at the 17-yard line as King was really rocked before he could pitch back to Atkins. That was Robert Banks, the linebacker, came in there. King started to go one way, came the other, but Banks was charging all the time, a, a fumble, but Atkins covers it and tackled for a loss. Tackled by Steve Lawrence, a sophomore from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Now you see King, he didn't know what hit him. That's the best that they have played that option so far today. You know, Robert Banks was there to force it, and Joe Johnson, 27, was right up there into the backfield of strong safety. That's what you have to do to shut it down. Second down and goal now from the 17 for SMU. Movement on the line. Flags down all over the place. We'll see if it was Notre Dame jumping off or whether they were pulled off by motion or movement on the offensive line of SMU. 61, Chris Jackson, senior. He's a little upset, Harry. He thinks they may have called the <laughs> offensive line for SMU for something illegal, a little movement, a little interior movement. But they did not. Instead, they're going to call it against Notre Dame. Offside is going to move the ball to the 12-yard line where the down will go over. It'll be second down and goal from the Irish 12. 
Jerry Faust thought the officials had changed their mind on the call. On the defense, contact. Second down. Seven nothing, SMU. Is that a cabbage patch doll, Greg? I'm not sure. I have two or boys. A replica of a cabbage. That's a cabbage patch doll. Yes. I know you have two dolls, but I, I mean two boys. But I thought you collected <laughs> dolls here. <laughs> Jack Snow does. <laughs> Rolling out is King. Looking upfield, right over the middle, wide open. Fullback has a touchdown. Runner Morrison touchdown. Kobe Morrison, the fullback. To see him, and he has an SMU touchdown of the Mustangs of stunned Notre Dame. You watch Don King again. It's a delay crossing pattern of 47. Kobe Morrison, he lets the linebackers drop 12, 14 yards deep. He sneaks underneath him, catches a little flat flare pass, and in there for the touchdown. So SMU has jumped to a 13 to nothing lead with a conversion coming up. We have 11.35 to play in the first half. Randy Brownlee will attempt the conversion. Old will be Dodge Carter. Snapper is Dale Hellestray. It's up, and it is good. We have 11.35 to play in the first half. There's a timeout in the action with the score. SMU 14, Notre Dame nothing. We'll be back. Ronzo Jefferson, that's Jefferson number three here, the deep men. Now Brandy Brownlee is going to kick off, and not Esteve. This is Brownlee. Brownlee gets the kick away. Tim Brown, a couple of yards deep in the end zone. He'll try to bring it out again. Tim Brown, some running room. The freshman has only one man between him and the goal line. Tackled by that one man at the 47-yard line. And that one man was Frankie Thomas. He's an exciting kickoff returner. Uh, he took the opening kickoff and ran it back to the 35-yard line. He had it deep in the end zone here. He starts out to the left, and then he takes the uh, defensive covering team down there, and then he makes a cut. He sees an opening there. There's a shoestring tackle who was missed. Had one man to beat, Frankie Thomas, but he played him off and made a sure tackle. First and 10, Notre Dame. They have it at the SMU 47-yard line. Good field position, trailing 14-0. Allen Pinkett, the lone running back, gets the handoff. Pinkett trying to get to the short side of the field. Gets inside the 45 to about the 43. A gain of three, Anthony Pepperly, the tackle. Look at that scoring drive. 80 yards, 14 plays, another six minutes and 20 seconds. That's, over, that's almost 11 minutes in their two scoring drives. Kingdom Morrison, 12-yard touchdown. Watch Timmy Brown again. He sets up his defenders. Watch him cut back. He makes the cut right there. Gets away from Brownlee, who's not a good tackler. He's a kickoff man. And uh, Frankie Thomas was there to make the tackle. Touchdown saving tackle for Thomas. It'll be second down and seven Notre Dame of the 43 of SMU. Gaping hole for Alan Pinkett. He's up at the 32-yard line by Tim Green. What a first down Notre Dame inside the 35 to the 32 of SMU. Got a great block that time by 52, Sean Heffron. Him something right up the side. What do you do? Well, you're looking for a seam in there. When the back gets that ball, all he wants is a little area, but he had so much room in there. It was a fantastic job of blocking by the right side of the Notre Dame defense or offensive line. Joe Howard and Mill Jackson wide to the left. Two tight ends. Bavaro, one of them's a wing on the right side. That's Ricky Gray. Here's Alan Pinkett again. Cuts inside the block of Heppard. He gets down to around the 26 yard line stopped by Monty Goen, junior linebacker from Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's a new wrinkle for the Notre Dame offense, putting the tight end and another tight end behind him on the wing back. If they don't overshift to it, they've got a, a power formation there. If they overshift, then they run back to the weak side. This quarterback for SMU, Don King, who's engineered two touchdown drives for the Mustang. Second down and four for Notre Dame with a 26-yard line. Allen Pinkett has the first down with a 20-yard line of SMU. And Jerry Ball, the leading tackler for SMU, has been very quiet today. He has been exceptionally quiet, which means you've got to give credit to the interior line for Notre Dame, in particular Mike Kelly, the center. There's Ball, number 34. Let's watch him here right here. He comes off. Williams. Look at Williams, 75. He's in an offset position. It's an excellent job by Larry Williams. 
That's what you want. That's what you want to do to the opposition's best down lineman. One-on-one, -on -one, put him on the ground. Williams has done a great job negating Jerry Ball. It'll be first and 10 Notre Dame at the 20-yard line of SMU. Erline, quick pass, incomplete. It was intended for Mill Jackson. He was covered on the play by Roderick Jones. It'll be second down and 10 Notre Dame at the 20-yard line of SMU. Has moved the ball well, 20 to 20, but they have not been able to get any points on the board. Exactly right. In key situations, we look at Bobby Collins. Now we're looking at Burline. Burline should have made that pass. The only difficulty about that is when you roll out to your left and you're a right-handed quarterback, it's extremely difficult to throw on the move. It's very, very difficult. Burline had 140 completions this season, third best in Notre Dame history. It's a second down and 10 call for Notre Dame. And off to Pinkett, gets a block from Williams. Pinkett gets down to the 16-yard line before he is a at the 16-yard line. Get on the bottom of the pile, Joe Phillips along with T.D. Briggs. Notre Dame shunning the pass, going with the, with the run, trying to break Alan Pinkett on a long one. Now they're in third and long. Mark Brooks coming in, Ricky Gray is going out, and Joe Howard comes in with a play from the bench for Jerry Faust on a third down and sixth call for the Irish at the SMU 16-yard line. Alan Pickett lined up in a slot on the right this time. Burline's going to throw for it, looking upfield, has great time, walks one to the end zone, great catch, touchdown Notre Dame! Great catch by Alan Pinkett, I believe, in the end zone. It was Pinkett touchdown, Notre Dame. Well, the Irish come right back here now, trailing 14 6 as we look well, at Well, Burline going on a quick count. He's got plenty of time. He has good blocking. He steps up there and he spots his man. He throws it high enough because the defender was there, and Pinkett goes up. And really makes a great catch. That was thrown over Timmy Green from the end zone. Watch Pinkett go high. He's going over Timmy Green, the defender there, and a good uh, pass, touchdown pass. Carney's extra point is up, and it is good. We have 8.26 left to play in the first half. Notre Dame scoring on a touchdown pass to Alan Pinkett, who had one touchdown reception during the regular season. There's a timeout of the action with a score, SMU 14, Notre Dame 7. We'll be back right after this. 14 to 7, the Irish scoring drive. Yeah, 47 yards, seven plays. It only took a little under three minutes, but a great uh, throw and a great catch. Great reception by Alan Pinkett. Tim Green really had good coverage on him. He was all over him. John Carney will kick off for Notre Dame. Kobe Morrison, Frankie Thomas, Donald Allen, the deep man. This is Kobe Morrison at the goal line. Kobe Morrison has some room up the middle. Finally stopped by Haywood at the 35-yard line of SMU. A good run back by Kobe Morrison. Seen some great kickoff returns. Tim Brown of Notre Dame. A bowl record with his 53-yard return. And here's Morrison with a good one. Here's the secret to this. Now you get it right up into the wedge. The wedge for SMU does a great job. There's a huge hole there. And here comes Bally's number 40 to come over and make the tackle. Along with Haywood number one. But it's a great run back by 47, Kobe Morrison. Watch it again. See the wedge now? He gets by the first tackle, gets into that wedge. Now it's clear sailing on left field. When you're a defensive man on a kickoff team and you see a big back coming at you like that, you start to wonder why you're playing this game. Mike Haywood, who is only 175, stayed with him. Rolling out is King. Looking up field, he'll run. Runs out of bounds on the near sideline and around the 38-yard line. A pickup of just three by Don King, the quarterback. And it'll bring out a second down and seven. Next shut that down. They haven't seen that on film or any other time of Notre Dame doing it this year. Second down, seven. Reggie Dupard back at the ball game for SMU. Gets over the 40 to the 42-yard line. A pickup on the play. Around five or six for Reggie Dupard, who had to leave the game with an ankle injury. And he's coming back limping again. It'll be 
third down and a long two for SMU. They have the ball at their own 42-yard line. Mustangs lead 14-7. receiver at the 48-yard line of Notre Dame was intended for Jeff Jacobs. Watch King right here. Let's see what happens after the ball is thrown. He's going to roll out to avoid the pressure, but after he releases that ball, he comes in there and I'll tell you, talk about lowering the boom. Mike Gann has done that on a few quarterbacks. There is Gann going in there. He slips a block. He always has his hands out in front of him. He uses them well. He runs over another blocker. And he's tough to hold. First punt for SMU. Dodge Carter gets a wobbly punt away. It takes an SMU roll out at the 15-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 Notre Dame at their own 15. There's a timeout of the action from Aloha Stadium with a score SMU 14 and Notre Dame 7. We'll be back right after this. At the third annual Aloha Bowl with 7.24 remaining to be played in the first half. Notre Dame first and 10 at their own 15-yard line. Steve Berline has Mark Brooks and Alonzo Jefferson behind him. Allen Pinkett is not in the Notre Dame lineup. Play action. Berline being rushed by ball. Gets a screen away to Alonzo Jefferson. Parker down the play. Great running by Jefferson to the 40-yard line. There is a marker down on the play. Roderick Jones finally made the tackle. May have had an eligible receiver, ineligible receiver downfield, possibly. Well, Berline uh, rolls to his left. He gets the deep, the flow of the defense. There goes Ball. He's after him, but Alonzo Jefferson out in the flat. We'll see what the call is. It's going to be brought back, called against Notre Dame. Good running by Alonzo. Jefferson, a sophomore from West Palm Beach, Florida. He was the Palm Beach Offensive Player of the Year twice in his high school career. The only other player to claim that was Anthony Carter, the great wideout from Michigan. Let's pick up the penalty and goal. Flipping on the offense, half the distance to the goal. First down. Penalty call against Notre Dame, half the distance to goal. Notre Dame has been plagued by penalties here in the Aloha Bowl, trailing 14 7. It's first and 10 Notre Dame at their own, or rather, first and 13 Notre Dame at their own 12. Erline in trouble, lost a wobbly pass. The viral catches, keeps his feet, nails the first down penalty marker down the play. The viral got to the 27. Tim Green finally dragged him down. The good running after the catch by the big tight end, Mark Bavaro. Maybe a late hit, Harry. Might be a late Base hit on mask. that. Base mask violation called against SMU. Well, Berline did a nice job. He was uh, rushed, as you will see here. There's the rush. He takes a step back. And off balance, he throws it out to Bavaro. Watch Bavaro use his other hand as a pivot wheel. He gets by Reggie Phillips, and then there's the late hit. Face mask right there. By Tim 17. Green. Tim Green. So it's first and 10 Notre Dame. They have it at their own 32-yard line. In motion comes Milt Jackson. Their line rolling out. A little shovel pass. Jefferson to midfield. Jefferson finally stopped by Tim Green at the 41-yard line of SMU on the shovel pass for Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame has used that play all year. The first time to Jefferson. Watch the rollout. A little flip here. There's Alonzo coming around to the outside. He'll get by Keith Brooks there, number 13. Right here. Tackled by number 17, Tim Green. Good run. Green second of the SMU defense and tackles during the regular season with 90 of them. It's first and 10 Notre Dame. They have it at the SMU 40-yard line. In motion comes Milt Jackson. Alonzo Jefferson gets the call. He bounces his way for five to the 35-yard line before he's stopped by Joe Phillips, the defensive tackle from Woodburn, Oregon. Bobby Collins, coach 
College at Southern Mississippi before coming to SMU. He's in his third year at SMU. And in the 1980s, he has the fourth best coaching record in all of collegiate football. Behind only Lavelle Edwards, Tom Osborne of Nebraska, and Vince Dooley of Georgia. It's a second down and five call. Here's Jefferson again. Jefferson gets about three. Stopped by Wade Johnson, a junior from Midland, Texas. It'll be a third down and two call for Notre Dame. Tom Linebarger comes back in defensively for SMU, as does Kip Case. Well, Bobby Collins, the SMU coach, uh, said that because of the heat here over, over in the islands, he was going to substitute freely, and he has offensively and defensively, and defensively in that line. Notre Dame lining up in the power eye. Tom Monahan has come in as an extra fullback, along with Mark Brooks. Oh, there's Jerry Ball with a big play. Hit Alonzo Jefferson at the 34-yard line. Said Jerry to Alonzo. Big play. Now that's going to give Jerry Ball an awful lot of confidence because he's been having his problems so far. You'll watch him 34 right over the center. Boom, he just sheds him right there and watch it right in the backfield. Smacko. Good job by Jerry Ball on number three, Alonzo Jefferson. Well, he just had good uh, penetration. He was supposed to be blocked by one of the fullbacks, but he penetrated uh, too far. A long field goal attempt by John Carty upcoming. This will be a 52-yard attempt under the hold of Mike Viracoli. Viracola. Carty has plenty of leg, and that is a 52-yard field goal by John Carty, the longest in his career. The Notre Dame gets points after the big play by Jerry Ball, a 52-yarder by Carty. There's a time out of the action with the score, SMU 14, Notre Dame 10. We'll be back right after this. Well, coming up at halftime, be sure to stay with us for a look at Southern Methodist University and the University of Notre Dame. And a visit with our friends from Timex and the Hawaii Visitors Bureau. We'll have first half highlights for you and first half statistics all coming up at halftime. John Carney will kick off. Kobe Morrison, Frankie Thomas, and Donald Allen, the deep men for SMU. Carney really gets his foot into that one. Kobe Morrison will not bring it out. It'll be first and 10 SMU. They'll put it in play for their own 20-yard line. John Carney's 52-yard field goal. All right. He said that's the longest in his career. One for two now in this game, and he kicked the, kicked the long one. That's also the longest field goal in Aloha Bowl history, shattering the 49er yarder last year by Nick Gansitano of Penn State. So it's first and 10 SMU. They have the ball at their own 20-yard line. 423 left to play first half. Kobe Morrison had some running room, picks up seven up the middle before he's wrestled down. By Ron Weisenhofer, but not before he picked up seven yards. It'll be second down and three. Scoring drive, 51 yards, a little over three minutes. Three passes, four rushes, but a great field goal, 51 yards by John Carney. It'll be a second down and three call for King. There's a handoff to Atkins, who's over the 30 to the 32 yard line. He has a first down. Stop on the play by Jeff Coons, a freshman from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. What a first down for Atkins at the 32. Atkins. More than Dupar because of the injury to Dupar has picked up 63 yards on 10 carries. First and 10. Mustangs. They have it at their own 32-yard line to put it in the air. Screen pass. Has Atkins. He gets two great blocks. Atkins over the 40 of the 47-yard line. And he got two great blocks to set up that screen for big yardage. Lawrence making the tackle for Notre Dame. He's going to get some good block here. 67, Andrew Campbell, and I believe at the center, Chris Jackson. You watch him right here, right out in front to the left. You don't really see, see the end product right there. Two golden white men down there on the ground. Good blocking, good running. Let's watch it again here now. You're going to see it. 
67 Andrew Campbell and 61 Chris Jackson. Look at them take on the two Notre Dame defenders. 48 to 36. Good job. Nice run here, but 32 Jeff Atkins tries to get to the outside. Tries to get by Steve Lawrence to free safety. Gets the ball to the SMU 47 yard line. Injured on the play following the great block is setter Chris Jackson. An all Southwest Conference performer his junior and senior year. He'll be playing in the East West Shrine game. He's out of the forest. Greg is in. King fires. by Marquise Pleasant. Hard line of Notre Dame. It's a first down SMU. It's probably the best pass that Don King has thrown. We're going to watch this. A curl in. Marquise Pleasant will be on the left side of your screen. He's going to come down and run it. Just a quick turn in about 14 yards deep. There's King. He lays the ball out there, reads it very well, puts the ball in there real nice, throws it away from number one Mike Hay with the defensive back towards the outside. Good pass, good catch by Marquise Pleasant. Ball at the 36-yard line of Notre Dame. First and 10 SMU. Here's Reggie Dupar trying to get outside, cuts back in, gets substantial yardage to the Notre Dame 28-yard line, a pickup of eight or nine before he's finally dropped by Joe Johnson, among others, along with Mike Larkin. Dupart wants to stay in. He goes, I don't want to, don't take me out. I want to stay in here running. We're going we're gonna to watch this again. Now, 79, Roy Dunn, the left tackle, is doing a job on Wally Klein. That's what allows number 21, Dupart, to get outside. Covers the ball up, as you notice, when he's getting ready to be tackled. Excellent job. Good thing. Second down, one call for SMU. Here's the fullback, Kobe Morrison, and he barrels his way for the first down of the 25 yard line of Notre Dame. Stacked up by Ron Weisenhofer in the whole middle of the Irish front, but not before he picked up the first down of the Notre Dame 25 yard line. Going to be first and 10 SMU with 2.07 to play, first half, and the Mustangs leading 14 to 10. Pleasant is wide to the left, wide to the right is David Adamson. John King on the option play, here's Dupar. Dupar picking up just about two or three. He was brought down by Weisenhoff, who's been in on a lot of tackles since being inserted into the Notre Dame defense. Ron is a junior from Oak Lawn, Illinois. Gain of three on the play. It'll bring on a second down and seven. And SMU has called timeout to stop the clock with 139 left to play in the first half. Bobby Collins thought officials let a few more seconds tick off the clock. Well, the fans in Hawaii have also picked up that infamous wave. It started here, didn't it, Harry? Didn't the wave start here in Honolulu? The real big ones, the Bonsai Pipeline. That's right, about 40 miles north of here. The mainlanders can say what they want, but the wave did start here in Honolulu. Well, they have it down pretty well. They're going to put four seconds back on the clock. That's what Bobby Collins was upset about. Sweeping Aloha Stadium. Much as the waves of Waikiki Beach swept George Connor's feet. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. No question of that. It'll be a second down and seven call. Well, Notre Dame uh, defensively has been in trouble most of the game. There you see the total yards 207 for SMU, 184 for Notre Dame. But SMU has been getting that uh, five, six, seven yards, Jack, on that first down. Notre Dame's defending second and three, second and one, second and four, and SMU can run or pass, and Notre Dame can't take any chances. They have to play solid defense, and SMU is really controlling the ball offensively. Almost looks like Notre Dame's linebackers are playing about five yards off the line of scrimmage. Well, you get both. You're absolutely correct. But what's happened is that the offensive line tackle the tackle the five big men from the Mustangs. They're going right to Notre Dame. They're not smaller than Notre Dame. They're the same size and the same height. But what they're doing is they're teeing off. And that's because it, SMU depends so much on their running game. They've got such good blocking up front from tackle to tackle to do an outstanding job. The other thing that impresses me on the SMU running backs, they run diagonally out to the side. When they Once they get that ball, they head straight up the field, and they're under power and good power. That's right. Run north and south. It'll be a second down and seven call for SMU. In motion is the tight end, Albert Reese. 
On the option play, here's Reggie Dupar. Barrels his way over Fallage and down to about the 11-yard line before he is brought down. It'll be first and 10 SMU. Another good run, another good execution by SMU. And what happens, that strong safety has got to come up and force that. You know, you watch here. Watch King again now. He's going to come down line of scrimmage. He's going to flick that ball with his left hand to do part. 23, Lawrence, he's got to get in that backfield to make that tackle because now you put all the emphasis on out here on Forty and Fallage, who just gets run right over by Dupart. Excellent job of running. First down, 10, SMU at the Notre Dame 11-yard line. I'm King calling the signal. Dupart gets the call again. This time he's corralled behind the line of scrimmage by Griffin and manages to squirt back to the 10. He picked up a yard, but Mike Griffin, a good defensive play for Notre Dame. That's one of the few times that a Notre Dame defender, other than uh, Banks, has gotten in there. That's a credit to that interior line. Craig Jackson, who was the center, went out for a while with Force Greg, number 53, coming in. Force going to make his papa very proud of him, Green Bay coach. Andrew Campbell, the left guard. Roy Dunn, the left tackle. Mike Edson, Dale Hellstray, the right side. And let's not forget Alba Reese, the big tight end, number 88, because a lot of that option stops starts with his down block on the defensive line on Mike Gann and Wally Klein. You saw that graphic about Reggie Dupart averaging. Time call for the Mustangs. They have the ball just inside the Notre Dame 10 yard line. Minute 27, plenty of time for SMU, leading 14 10. stomach he looked up there and looked at Gann right in his face he couldn't get rid of that ball quick enough great job by Mike Gann number 78 well you look for the ball and you know Mike Gann is going to be there he's been there all year long extra back coming in Hiawatha Francisco Mike Golick goes out for Notre Dame on a third down and very long call for SMU King being rushed by Gann he's sacked by Gann back at the 31 yard line Gann, who had 10 sacks during the regular season, continues his performance in postseason play. Well, Mike Gann coming in from the outside. There's no play action fake there. King's in trouble, but Gann with strong hands uh, pulls him down. Hellstray's been keeping Gann in check pretty much, and that took him almost out. This is going to be a tough field goal shot here. Randy Brownlee, this will be a 48-yard attempt. SMU has tagged three on, and that is the longest field goal in Brandy Brownlee's career, a 47-yarder. Coming with just seven seconds to play in the first half, giving the Mustangs a 17 to 10. The Mustangs will kick off for SMU. Notre Dame, the deep men are going to be Tim Brown and Alonzo Jefferson. It's on the clock left in the first half. Say hello to Randy's parents from in uh, in Texas down there, same hometown as Cash Birdwell, the fine trainer for SMU. Garland, Texas. Esteve comes down on the ball, gets a boot away, booting away from Tim Brown, and in so doing, he got a lucky bounce and a bounce into the end zone. Looked like it was going to go out of bounds, but it did not. A Notre Dame player on the kickoff return team is down on the field. Duffy, the junior from Carlisle, Kentucky. President of Aloha Charities. Jim Byrne. All the fine people of Aloha. Alonzo Jefferson up the middle for nine yards, but that's going to be the last play of the first half. As SMU will go into the locker room with the lead at halftime. That's the end of the first half. With the score, the Mustangs of SMU 17, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame 10. We'll be back right after this.
John Carney will kick off for Notre Dame. The deep men for SMU start the second half. Kobe Morrison, Frankie Thomas, and Donald Allen. Carney gets a driving kickoff. This is Kobe Morrison fumbling, picking it up at the goal line. Morrison, some running room, finally dropped at the 20-yard line. Ryan Beamer made the initial hit. And then he was picked up. That was Brian Boomer with the initial one. And then he was picked up by Gene Bob to put the final stop on him at the 20-yard line. First and 10 SMU. They have it at the 20-yard line. Second half underway at the third annual Aloha Bowl. Welcome to our viewers watching on ESPN throughout the country. First and 10 SMU at the 20. Here's an inside handoff to Dupard, and he gets six up to the 26-yard line. Stopped by Mike Kovaleski, but not until Reggie Dupard picked up six more yards. This is going to be an interesting quarter. SMU has outscored their opponents by 34 points in the third quarter, whereas Notre Dame has been outscored by two with their opponents. Second down and four for the Mustangs of their own 26. Fake to Dupar. The pitch out on the end of the round. And again, nothing going for the wide out. Ron Morris, who took the pitch out, he stopped by Robert Banks for no gain. Third down and four. Well, Notre Dame made a change in their defense earlier in the game in the first half. They had their linebackers going in with the quarterback. This time, they had him out taking the pitch man. And uh, Banks was there. So it's a third and four call for Don King. <laughs> Depart and Hashaway are the running backs behind him. Reggie Dupard not going to get the first down. He's stacked up by Tony Perjanic at the 28-yard line. And SMU will be forced to punt for only the second time in the game. Notre Dame playing strong defense here. Running behind the fullback and the pulling guard. Let's watch for Janik come in and make a sure tackle. He's assisted. Look at the three other white jerseys surrounding the ball carrier. Dodge Carter averages 43 yards. The punt for SMU, a transfer from Texas A&M. Joe Howard in solo safety for Notre Dame. Driving punt returnable. Small wonder takes it at the 35. Howard up to the 43. And Notre Dame will start in good field position at their own 43-yard line, stopped by Kobe Morrison. There's a timeout of the action with a score, SMU 17, Notre Dame 10. We'll be back right after this. 17-10 SMU, third quarter just underway. Notre Dame first and 10 at their own 43-yard line in good field position. Burline six for nine in the first half for 96 yards. One touchdown, that was thrown to Allen Pinkett. Her line to throw, got Milt Jackson for the first time. Jackson over midfield to the 44-yard line of SMU. Finally dragged down by Keith Brooks and T.D. Briggs. Jackson's first reception, good for a first down, Notre Dame. Well, Burline throwing out to Jackson. The cornerback, Reggie Phillips, backed off. Burline saw it. Watched the fine move by Milt Jackson there, going to the outside, getting away from Reggie Phillips. And it's a first down. First and 10 Notre Dame with the SMU 43-yard line. Burline's going to put it up again. Has great protection over the middle and off the fingertips of Tim Brown. Brown, the intended receiver, it's incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 Notre Dame with the SMU 43-yard line. Notre Dame coming out with a double tight end offense. This does uh, several things. Number one, it negates the shifting of the uh, SMU defense because you can't have a, a strong or weak side. David McGuffey was injured, but he's all smiles. He's all right. He's going surfing with the game. So Second down at 10. Erline calling the signals. The lone running back is Alan Pink. He gets the call on a draw play. Yard line, a pickup of three was stopped by TD Briggs. Strong side linebacker, a junior from Dallas, Texas. They bring up a third down and seven call for Burline. Make it third and six, give Pinkett four yards on the play. Tim Brown coming in. Mark Brooks coming in. Pinkett going out. Ricky Gray going out. 17-10 SMU. Running back, they get the screen away incomplete. It was intended for Mark Brooks, 
that is incomplete. And a high rush put on by SMU as they brought the all-out blitz. Well, Pink is, I mean, Berline here is uh, running hard. He's got to throw it a little bit earlier than he wants to and throw it a little bit harder. The Brooks is there. He's a little off balance trying to catch it, as you can see. And the ball was down around his knees, and he missed it. It's a good pass rush, so by 97, Tom Leinbarger and Kid Case of SMU, they had a linebacker blitz on that, and they got in there right in Berline's face in a minute. Excellent job by the two SMU defenders. Mike Veracola to punt. The deep man is Andrew Livingston for SMU. Livingston fakes the fair catch, and Veracola drops it inside the five-yard line. It's down by John McCabe at the two-yard line where SMU will take over. First and ten at their own two-yard line. Concept by Veracola. Normally down there, you see what you call a pooch kick, where you try to just pop it down there, and let him surround it. But he a pooch. But what he what he did on that one was excellent. He will hang the ball and let his punt team get down and surround it. So when it does come down, they'll keep it from going in the end zone. Good execution on that one. Jerry Faust pleased with that punt by Veracola as SMU comes out with the ball at their own two-yard line, and they're operating from a power eye formation. And off inside to. It looked like he gets out to the five, a pickup of around three on the play. SMU does not want to make any silly mistakes down here. They probably will stay away from that triple option type thing and just hand that ball off in the middle, get a little breathing room so if they have to punt, their punter will have some room to kick that ball out of there. Gary Hashaway has come back in at fullback for SMU and Kobe Morrison going out on a second down and seven call. Atkins and Dupard, the tailbacks, are in the backfield, and Atkins gets the call. No, a play action, and they're going for the bundle, and a great catch by Reggie Dupard. At the 44-yard line, great play action by King, and a sensational grab by Dupard. It's a great catch. That's a great call. That's a gutsy call down in that area, right when you're on the four-yard line, but let's look at it here. Dupard, who's off the left, you don't see him. He fakes it here to number 32, Atkins. Pulls back in the meantime, Dupart is heading up to the far sidelines. Now watch this ball. It's a perfect pass. King lays it out there really nice over Lawrence, and Dupart with the supreme effort. Great catch by Reggie. Ball at the 44-yard line of SMU. First and 10 on the option. King keeps, and King gets about one, and that's all. He's stacked up around the 45 or 46-yard line. Notre Dame this half so far covering the option play much better than they did in the first half. They made some adjustments at halftime. I think I really like Whitey Jordan, the offensive coordinator for SMU, who made the call. He sends the signals down. He sends the plays down on the sideline, and they flag him in. But it was a great gutsy call. Bobby Leach is wide to the left. Marquise Pleasant is wide to the right. This is Leach in motion. King rolling out, looking upfield. Shoots a wobbly pass, picked off. Troy Wilson, or did he trap it? The official saying he trapped it. Troy Wilson was there, but the official says he trapped the ball. We'll bring up the third down and nine. Watch it here now. He's going to roll out to his right again to avoid the rush. Let's see if the interception is actually made. His receiver, he's got, there's the ball. It's, it's hard to tell from there. I think he drops it. Now, it's a good call by the official. Excellent call. So it's a third down and nine for SMU. SMU sending Jeff Jacobs and Ron Morrison as the wideouts. Leach and Pleasant come off. They're wide to the same side, the right side, on a third down and nine call. King straight back, being rushed, gets it away. Way over the head of the intended receiver who was Ron Morris. Again, it was Mike Gann putting heat on King. It'll bring out a fourth down in the putting situation as Dodge Carter will come in to punt. There's Don King, number two. He felt the pressure on that and just wanted to get rid of it, threw it downfield. Smart move, get rid of it, throw it over everybody's head so nobody can intercept it. Dale Hellestray will do the snapping. He'll be playing in the East-West Shrine game in the Japan Bowl, an all-Southwest Conference selection. Plays offensive tackle as well as snapper for SMU. That's a low 
returnable punt. Joe Howard at the 20-yard line gets the block up over the 30 to the 35-yard line where Notre Dame will have it a good field position. First and 10 at their own 35. Not much hang time and Dodge Carter's punts. There's a timeout of the action with the score. SMU 17, Notre Dame 10. We'll be back right after this. SMU leading Notre Dame 17-10. 10-01 remaining to be played in the third quarter. Notre Dame will have it first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. Burline calling the signals. The lone running back is Alan Pinkett. Burline laterals back shakily to Pinkett, who runs out of bounds after a pickup of about two yards as he juggled the pitch back. Tim Green was right there to force Pinkett out of bounds. Notre Dame sideline, number five is Brandy Wells. Southern Methodist sideline. Receivers coach talking to the wideouts for SMU. It'll be a second down and eight call. For Notre Dame, they have it at their own 37-yard line. Here's Pinkett on an inside dive play, and he gets over the 40 to the 41-yard line. A pickup of about four brings up a third down and four. Kit Case comes back in defensively for SMU. Ixman, a sophomore from Alvin, Texas. Third down and four, Notre Dame. They have it at their own 41-yard line. I think it has established an Aloha Bowl record for most rushing attempts at 17, and he gets the pitch back and right there to greet him. Number 22 for SMU, Ron Anderson, a senior linebacker from Leveland, Texas. You watch Pinkett right here now. A great job by Ron Anderson, 22. He's going to delay. He's going to run outside, and there's Anderson, 22. That's how you play that play that Notre Dame tries to pull. They don't run it as often as SMU. Therefore, they're probably not as adept as SMU is. Mike Veracola to punt. Back in safety for SMU is Andrew Livingston. Punt by Viracola. Backs Livingston up to the 14. Livingston gets to the 19. He's brought down at the 19-yard line. Good coverage by Marv Spence. That'll be first and 10 for SMU. Spotted at the 24, not the 19. 24-yard line. The Mustangs will take over. Go! 51-yard punt and 8-yard return by Livingston. Last four seasons, SMU has been the winningest team in collegiate football, followed by Nebraska, BYU, Clemson, and Georgia. Here's a handoff to DuPard, and he squirms his way up to about the 29 or 30 yard line, a pickup of around six by Reggie DuPard. He's a junior, six feet tall, 201 pounds out of New Orleans, Louisiana. All Southwest Conference is a sophomore last year, and this year is a junior. Cedric Figaro, number 48, in his outside left linebacker for the Irish. He's playing out a little wider than the normal linebacker position, and he has good speed to the outside to stop the outside pitch. It'll be second down and four for SMU. Here's an inside handoff to the fullback, Gary Hashaway, who picks up the first down over the 35 to the 36-yard line. First and 10 Mustangs. Hashaway, junior from Pittsburgh, Texas. Watch it from the end zone right here. Not nothing fancy. Just hand that ball right in there. That's the start of the triple option right there. You hand that ball in there. There's a good job of running. He hits, boom. He sticks somebody in there really good. Hurts him in the back. Gary Hashway, there he is. 5'11", 194 pound junior. First and 10 Mustangs at their own 36 yard line. In motion goes Scott Ford. Here's a handoff to Dupard, and he's dropped by Eric Dorsey after he picked up about three yards. Eric Dorsey, the nose tackle in on the stop. At the 39 yard line, a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. SMU leading 17 10. We have 7.15 to play here in the third period at the third annual Aloha Bowl. margin of victory in the short history of the Aloha Bowl has been three points. Rolling 
out is King, being chased by Figaro, being dropped by Cedric Figaro at the 30-yard line of SMU. And Harry, that's the subtle change I talked about a few plays ago. Cedric Figaro, the freshman from Lafayette, Louisiana, with good speed, and he uses it well. You see him get him away from a blocker and force a sack on the quarterback. Third down and 16 now for SMU back at their own 30-yard line. Marquise Pleasant goes wide to the left. A slot on the left is Bobby Leach. King straight back. He's going to go for a long bomb. And it is incomplete and nearly intercepted by Mike Haywood. But they dropped the flag as Marquise Pleasant they are going to call Haywood for pass interference, I believe. Well, I don't know. The way the Notre Dame players are congratulating one another. Must, I think it's offensive pass yeah. interference on Marquise Pleasant. Could be. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. They are marching it back, so it'll be against... SMU penalty plus loss of down. Let's pick it up. The official call from referee. Penalty is offensive pass interference. That's also loss of down. 15 yard fourth down. Let's watch it right here now. Let's see if Marquise Pleasant number 89. When the ball's up here, let's see if he interferes with Haywood number one. It's the left of your screen up at the top. I don't know. There, there may be a slight bump, but I'm not positive about it. it. Looks like he just trips up over Mike Haywood's feet. A costly penalty, loss of down and yardage. Dodge Carter to boot, nearly blocked, but he gets it away. Joe Howard in SMU territory, and small wonder ducks his head and gets to the Mustang 41, where Notre Dame will take over an excellent field position at the Southern Methodist 41-yard line. You know what the hang time on that was, Harry? What was it? 2.89. That's not that's not good enough. You got to hang that ball up in the air, get that thing in there for four and a half seconds to allow your coverage team to get down there. And there's a timeout of the action from the Aloha Bowl. The score: SMU 17. To Bobby Collins on the SMU sideline. Six left in the third quarter. The Mustangs leading by seven, 17 to 10. Notre Dame in good field position at the SMU 41. Their line straight back to pass. Being rushed. Being sacked. Seven-yard line by Monty Goen, a junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, walk-on for SMU. Monty's not too big either. He's only going 190 pounder on a five-foot, ten-inch frame. We're going to see him from the right side playing the outside linebacker. He gets up inside the big tackle for Notre Dame. Wolf, look at that. Puts the pressure on, brings Burline down, taking him out of field position. Good effort by SMU. Nice play by Monty Goen. That's Jay Underwood, number 74, and he. Uh, Got to the side of uh, blocking his man. So it's a second down and 22 for Notre Dame. They give the ball to Alan Pinkett. He's going to get some of it back. Back to the original line of scrimmage. A pickup of around 11 before he's stopped by Anthony Beverly and Keith Brooks. There is a penalty down on the play, however. against SMU. There's a handoff to Pinkett pulling guard Scannell. And uh, comes up the middle here. We can see if they get the penalty here. See if anybody piles on. That's going to move the ball all the way to the Mustang 26-yard line. A major penalty against SMU. Let's pick it up from referee Vance Carlson. Personal foul on the defense. First down. Personal foul against SMU. It's first and ten Notre Dame. They have it at the SMU 26-yard line. Didn't see it in there. Didn't see it on the, on the carry. Hard to pick out. Must have been away from the ball. Berline calls the signals out of first and ten. He sends Milt Jackson in motion to the right. Allen Pinkett. There he gets about three, not much up the middle though. Pick up a three by Pickett brings out a second down and seven call for Notre Dame. Joe Howard.
Ward comes in with a play from the bench for the Irish, and Tim Brown comes out. It's a nice job of filling that hole by number 54, T.D. Briggs, 6'2", 214-pound junior. Second down and a long seven call. Call it second down and eight for Notre Dame. Inside the SMU 25-yard line. Here's Pickett again. He has an open. the ball carrier finally stopped by free safety Tim Green along with Joe Phillips. Good cross packing by Tim Scannell and Brooks. There you see Brooks take the outside man and Pinkett picking his hole coming up the middle. It's a good game on the first down down to the 10th. There watch it again. See the cross block there. There's uh, Scannell. Pinkett running back runs into the green. 105 yards for Pinkett so far. Here's Mark Brooks. blocking no pulling at all and Brooks really wanted this one he's running fairly high but he's got big legs and good drive and he gets into the end zone Mark Brooks who had three rushing touchdowns during the regular season now John Carney to attempt a conversion Kevin Kelly will snap Mike Viracola to hold it's up and it is good if we have a tie game at the third annual Aloha Bowl Jerry Faust happy with that touchdown by his Cincinnati Bowler product, Mark Brooks. 350 remaining to be played in the third quarter, and we are tied at 17, as been the case of Aloha Bowl's tight football game. You watch Brooks coming in here right now. What's happening is the interior offensive line of Notre Dame is working over against Jerry Ball. You see Ball right there at 34, just misses. He tries to make the tackle. But here's Brooks' strength. This comes from the waist down. He's got tremendous legs. He just drives on into the end zone. Jack Larry Williams and George, who was a UPI second team All-American and AP third team All-American, who will be playing in the Hula J Japan Bowl. George, as you know, he was injured much of the first part of the season. But Larry Williams has really come out of the 276-pound offensive yard. He really uh, has. He was injured almost all year long, and he couldn't practice during the week. Now, this is really tough on a player because he can't get his timing down. He missed is some of the strategy out on the field and that's where you have to learn it on the field in addition to the classroom work but once he started to pra back to practice with the team he's been great there's mark brooks who scored the 11 yard touchdown thanks to the good blocking by larry williams among others chris smith has been out since midway through the first half and he will not return but mark brooks taking the place of chris smith has performed admirably we are tied carney's kickoff will not be returned i don't think it lands in the end zone so it'll be brought out of the 20 yard line or smu will have it first and 10 from their own 20. another good kickoff by carney who has more not returned than he has returned when he is kicking off from Jupiter, Florida. Notre Dame offensive huddle. Mapping their strategy for the next possession. Meanwhile, SMU coming out first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Here's Kobe Morris in the freshman fullback, and he rambles for seven yards on just a quick opener. By Mike Haywood and Kobe Morris that is shaken up on the play. He's getting up slowly as is Dale Telestre, the fine offensive tackle for SMU. Morris is banged up a little bit, right here. He may just have had the wind knocked out of him. Let's take a chance or a moment here and see exactly what the problem is. I don't think it's anything real serious. Mark Brooks, Mark Bavaro on your screen. For Notre Dame. Here's Coach Carl Selmer. Working with the offensive line. You just slide around that 18 yards. You went outside from the woodshed. You have to go get 40. We're tied at 17. 339 left to play in the third quarter. Bobby Collins spent 20 years as an assistant coach at Mississippi State, Colorado State, George Washington, Virginia Tech, North Carolina. 
finally got a shot at Southern Mississippi as a head coach was very successful there now in his third year at SMU. Kobe Morrison came off the field limping just a little bit. I don't think it's anything serious. He may very well be back in the game a little bit later. Harry Hashaway has taken his place. It is a second down and three call. The handoff goes to Atkins and a hard running tailback up over the 35 to the 37 yard line goes Jeff Atkins, a 216 pound sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas. First and 10 SMU. You watch Atkins 32 now, just a stutter step to his left. Now watch him cut right back in there behind it, blocking number was a 51, Mike Edson. Good job running. He's running north and south. Notre Dame comes in, they're coming in late. They're hitting from the side. Those big linebackers are getting in there just a little bit late. First and 10 SMU at their own 38-yard line. In motion comes Adamson. Here's an inside handoff to the fullback, Hashaway. And Hashaway up over the 40 to the 42 or 43-yard line. Picked up around four before Mike Golick made the tackle. And again, you know, about four yards by Hashaway. And again... Dale Hellestray gets up slowly for SMU, number 70. Chris Jackson, the senior center, number 61, back in the game, although Forrest Gregg, his substitute, did a fine job of relieving him. Second down and six, SMU at their own 42-yard line. King out of the lay hand off to Atkins, and Atkins has the first down of them some to midfield. Jeff Atkins taking the ball to the 50-yard line before he's brought down. I'm looking at uh, Tony Virginic here. He's back about five yards. He went with the original fake. He went out to his left. Now he's coming back. He's uh, getting hit there by Roy Dunn, the offensive tackle. First and ten, SMU. They have it at midfield. five for before he was hit by Bally. Atkins now is rushed for 84 yards on 13 carries. Reggie Dupart now is coming back in the SMU lineup. And Atkins is coming out. It'll be a second down and five call for King. Passing eight for 14 for 150 yards. And off short of a first down, a pickup of around three is the fullback Hashaway. Hashaway gains three. It's third down and two SMU at the Notre Dame 42 yard line. Hashaway gained 167 during the regular season, average four and one tenth yards per carry. seven to ten point lead they haven't lost it or gotten worried or upset or trying to press or continue what they do best good ball control solid ground game Frank Hubbard comes in as an extra tight end on a third and two on the rollout pitch back to Dupont running room Joe Johnson at the 34 yard line but a big game for SMU Joe Johnson making the hit at the 34 yard line to fire the ball carrier Dupard right here now, number 21. This is a good job, we have to say, by Joe Johnson, 27 strong safety. He plays off the block, gets outside, plays off the block of Atkins, gets outside to contain Dupart and runs him out of bounds. He'll be spotted at the Notre Dame 33-yard line, first and 10 SMU. Dupart has picked up 66 yards on 12 carries. for SMU. On the option, here's Dupart again, and he is tripped up by Mike Haywood, but not after he gets inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Gain on the play of about six for Reggie Dupart. Well, Larry, you know, again, as we said earlier, they're not getting excited. They're playing that ball control. They're coming back to that option. Not a lot of passes either, if you notice in this drive. Not very many at all. One of the reasons that option is uh, working is Ron Morris 
out on the flank. He's not a, a really a, a cup blocker, but he's a nuisance blocker. He gets in the way of the cornerback, and he gets him out of the out of position, and then he allows the his uh, running back to make extra yards. That's right. That, that's what you want your receivers, your outside people to do. You don't have to knock the defender down. Get in his way and let your tail off for your block. You come inside or go outside. But be in position to block if you have to. Second out and four for SMU. Here's a handoff to Ducard. And he is a little short of a first down. He picks up a couple, maybe three. Hard the ball carrier to host the Notre Dame tacklers in. Third down and short for SMU at the Notre Dame 25 yard line. They'll bring in another tight end. Greg Hubbard checking in for SMU. Third down and two, and will not get a playoff before the end of the third quarter. The end of the third quarter of play from the Aloha Bowl, the score, Notre Dame 17, SMU 17. We'll be back right after. Along with George Connor and Jack Snow at Aloha Stadium for the third annual Aloha Bowl. We are tied at 17-17 as we start the fourth and final quarter. After three quarters, you see that SMU has picked up 314 yards and Notre Dame 234. SMU will be looking at a third down and two call from the Notre Dame 25-yard line. I'm making no predictions, Harry. The last time I said they were going to keep it on the ground and grind it out, they threw a pass for 30 yards in a completion. Another touchdown a pass to pullback. They're in a power eye. Both Atkins and Dupart in the backfield along with Gary Hashaway. Joe Johnson, the try captain for the Irish. And Notre Dame will take over on downs at their own 24 as Dupart has fumbled the ball. Wait a minute. Oh, they called, they blew the, they blew the play dead. They blew the play dead. No Let's watch Dupart here. Now he hits up into the middle of that line. He gets stacked up pretty good. The ball is loose already. Yeah, the stiff, stiff. There it is right there. You take it bounce. Yep. Yeah, he never had control of it. Never had control. He, when the initial hit was made. You watch it right here now. Let's watch the exchange. He'll lose it early. There it is right there. He doesn't have there it There it is. He's got the ball. He loses it. He starts on his downward flight. Yeah, that's, that's a little questionable call. But so was Burlines, I think. Let's look at it again here. Well, you can see he, he doesn't have a hold of it in his hands there. See, it's twisting and turning, and then it pops up right there. He gets it knocked out of him. There's no question that. I think uh, what, what I think what the officials are doing, they're evening it out a little bit. I think Burline happened in the middle, and uh, yeah, the up, well, umpire in the middle ruled it down, so that's why they're calling it down. Gary Faust doesn't like it at all. SMU will maintain possession. They did not get a first down. They have fourth down and inches to go for a first down. Gary's going to argue long and loud, but he's not going to win the argument. And SMU will keep possession of the ball with a score tied early in the fourth quarter. A big break now for SMU. Now they're going to have to capitalize on it, keep that drive going, get something on the board, preferably a touchdown. The officials are calling a timeout to measure. SMU is aware that the ball is short. But SMU can't ask for a measurement. They're buying time to call in a play. That's exactly what they're doing. It's not bad strategy either. 17 17, 14 56 left to play. SMU will go for it. They will eschew the field goal try with fourth down in just a bit. From the power eye formation. King calls the signal. Dupart has the first down. He's the lead to about the 17-yard line. Goes Reggie Dupart for the first down. SMU. Stopped by Mike Golick. 
right in there behind the big side of that left left side of that line. 79 Roy Dunn and 67 Andrew Campbell. 6'5", 271 and 6'6", 272. Oh, it's first and 10 SMU at the 22 of Notre Dame, not the 17. First and 10 Mustangs at the Notre Dame 22-yard line. Don King, junior quarterback. Hand off to his fullback, the first man through Hashaway, and he gets to about the 19, a pickup of three. It'll bring out a second down and seven. 14, 10 and counting. The third annual Aloha Bowl, tied at 17. Jeff Jacobs comes in at a wide receiver spot with a play from the bench. All at the 19-yard line of Notre Dame. a third down and long for the Mustang. All of the 17-yard line of Notre Dame, so it'll be third down and five for SMU. Marquise Pleasant coming in with a play from the bench. Pleasant is a sophomore from Dallas Kimball High School. Third down, five, SMU. Johnson. He was caught by Gary Hashaway, but Hashaway did not appear to make the first down. I think King may be down. Let's look at it right here. He's going to roll out to his right. The same play they used twice before with much success. He dropped the ball off in there to number eight, Gary Hashaway. He almost gets the first down, but he doesn't quite get it. He gets popped down pretty good. Let's look at it again. You're going to see Hashaway number eight. He's going to set over to his right, which is the left of your screen. Now watch him come across the screen and disappear. He's coming back against the grain. There he is. Makes a good catch. Now he's got to try and turn up field, but he can't. He gets taken down right there, and then 42 comes in Larkin and puts the hammer to him. After the release of the pass by King, he was hit by Wally Klein, the big 278-pound sophomore from Midland, Texas, and King was down, but he's walking under his own power, and he's all right. It is fourth down and about a half a yard to go for a first down for SMU. King, Jr., All-Southwest Conference from Dallas, 6 feet, 194 pounder. Love the Southwest Conference in passing efficiency, 12th in the nation in passing efficiency. Let's see if we can see what happens right here. He releases the ball. There it is. Right there, the ball is up in the air, and in 96, Wally Klein comes in there and pops him real good. Bobby Waters, a freshman from Garland, Texas, will take over a quarterback and a fourth and a half a yard to go for the first down call from the power eye. Ashaway, Depard, and Atkins are the running backs for SMU. Waters hands off to Dupard, and he'll have the first down. Reggie Dupard inside the 12 to about the 11 gets the first down, SMU. what you call having a great deal of confidence in your backup quarterback. On a fourth down situation, you're in a tie ball game. You're down there on the 11-yard line. He hasn't had a chance to take a snap, and you send him in the ball game. Good job by Bob Waters. They, they ran right at Notre Dame's defensive strength. They ran right at Mike Gann. Exactly, exactly. They're going to measure, but I'm sure that Dupart has the first down. Don King will come back in a quarterback for SMU. He has about 20. King back in a quarterback. He missed one play. It'll be first and 10 SMU. They have the ball at the Notre Dame 11 yard line. 12 50 left to play. Tied at 17. Dupard and Hashaway, the running backs for the Mustang. Here's Dupard. Shakes one tackle. Can't elude another. He's dropped at the 10 yard line. Might have picked up a yard to make the hit, but the initial slowdown was accomplished by Wally Klein. Wally Klein, 6'8", 278 from Midland, Texas. Playing against
against his buddy Roy Dunn, number 79, 6'5", 271. Played against each other in high school. Second out a nine call for SMU from the Notre Dame 10-yard line. Jerry Faust intently looking on. Don King. Facing Don King. Marquise Pleasant coming back in with a play from the bench for SMU. Jeff Jacobs going out. Third and 13. Ashaway and Dupart are the running backs. Notre Dame showing blitz. They're in. Fourth down, and they'll try a field goal that would put the Mustangs on top. Randy Brownlee will come in to attempt a field goal. Watch right here now, King. You may think that it might have been down in the ball, but it is not. There's a tremendous pass rush right there. 49, Kovaleski comes in. King starts out. DiBernardo's in there. He's throwing the ball to eight. You see number eight sitting there, Gary Hashaway. So there's no question he's trying to make the completion to his fullback. Dodge Carter will hold. They'll hell straight and snap. This will be a 30-yard attempt with an angle. It is up, and it is good. And SMU, 11.47 left to play in the Aloha Bowl. There's a timeout of the action with the score. SMU, 20, Notre Dame, 17. We'll be back right after this. SMU with 11.47 left to play as Esteve comes down on the ball. Short kickoff. This will be Alonzo Jefferson at the nine-yard line. Alonzo Jefferson, penalty marker down. And Jefferson gets the 29, but Notre Dame probably is going to be penalized for an illegal block on the kickoff return. Flipping. I think they're going to sneak in and say Mark Brooks may have gotten a little bit of a late hit or something in there. SMU scoring drive was a time-consuming scoring drive. We have a two left. 67 yards again. Look at the time. Seven minutes and three seconds. All of their scoring drives have been from a very, very long distance. 76 yards or 67 as we see. Uh, 79, 80. It's an outstanding job by the Mustangs offensively. They got a hold now. They got to keep Notre Dame pinned up back inside their own territory. Try to get the ball back in good field position. Notre Dame's back at their own 10 following a clipping penalty on the kickoff return. It'll be first and 10 Notre Dame at their own 10 yard line. Howard wide right, no Jackson wide left. Play action fake to Pinkett and Burline's in trouble and Burline's scrambling and he is going to be dragged down back at the eight yard line by John Eichsman, the sophomore defensive tackle from Alvin, Texas. There's Eichsman, 6'5", 246 pounds. A loss of one, it'll be second down 11. Oh, you Berline runs the play action. He fakes the pink at going to the out to the left. Look at the good coverage now. Where there's a white jersey, there's a blue jersey. And Berline has no place to go, and he's dragged down from behind. Give 97 Tom Leinberger credit to for turning that play around and forcing Berline to go the opposite way where Eichsman was waiting. Second down, a reverse, and Brown fumbles it, and he's in big trouble and down to the five-yard line. Brought down by Kip Case, the weak side line from Dallas. A loss of four more brings up a third down and 15. Tim, Timmy Brown comes around and there's the pitch. It bounced off his shoulder pad there. He was lucky to get it back. By that time, the defense recovered. There you see uh, number 44 is in there. That's Kit Case. Kit Case is in there in 31 also. Anthony Beverly did an outstanding job, the outside linebacker. So Notre Dame third down and 15 from their own five-yard line. 
scrimmage by Mike Perino, the offensive right tackle, and Notre Dame will be pushed back even further, half the distance to the goal, back to the two and a half. The Mustangs are doing it defensively. They're holding him down here, and that's what they want. And dead ball, full start on the offense. If you're Notre Dame, do you, do you run a running play and try to get some breathing move, uh, room so you can get the punt away? Well, we shall see what Berline calls on a third down and long. He does run a running play to Alan Pinkett, who gets breathing room back to the original line of scrimmage, stopped by Tim Green. It brings up a fourth down in a punting situation as Mike Viracola will come in to punt for Notre Dame and solo safety for SMU will be Andrew Livingston. SMU will come out of this series with good field position and 9.50 left to play. Mustangs leading by three. Kevin Kelly will snap. Good snap as Kevin Kelly always does. Low kickoff. This is returnable certainly from the 50-yard line. Livingston all the way to the Notre Dame 35-yard line where it'll be first and 10 SMU at the 35. A 40-yard kickoff, 15-yard return by Livingston, but there is a penalty marker down on the play. If it's against Notre Dame, SMU will decline and take the ball right where they have it in great field position. Not a real good hang time by Veracola on that one, 3.06. It looked like he got it off the side of his foot. Penalty is against SMU. Notre Dame will definitely take it and let Viracola punt the ball again and try to push SMU back a little further as the officials all from the Big A Conference are discussing the situation. It's amazing how these penalties are starting to come quite a bit towards the end of the third quarter, end of the fourth quarter. The first quarter, first half was relatively penalty free, wasn't it? It's hard to recall a whole lot of penalties. Here's Vance Carlson. Against SMU. The penalties in the first half. Notre Dame had three for 32. SMU two for only 10 yards. Evidently it came on the return. SMU will maintain possession, but they'll be backed up to midfield. So instead of starting from the Notre Dame 35, it'll be at midfield. Here's Vance. We have personal foul. The receiving team is 15 yard penalty. First down. So, first and 10 for the Mustangs at midfield. SMU leading 2017. 928 left to play. And there is a timeout of the action from the Aloha Bowl in Honolulu. Score the Southern Memphis University 20 and Notre Dame 17. And we'll be back to play 2017 SMU. They have the lead and the ball at midfield as Don King calls the signals. And off to Atkins. Atkins pulls his way for about three or four yards. Brought down on the play by Greg Kinjins. With Cedric Figaro at the 46 yard line, a pickup of four. It'll be second down and six. The Mustangs have good field position now in this drive. They want to keep pounding away, pounding away, and let's get something else. Let's get another score on the board. Touchdown be great, but let's, a field goal will be fine also. Let's come away with something. Second down, six call. And off to the fullback, and he has good running room. Hashaway moves his way close to a first down to the Notre Dame 40-yard line. The attendance this afternoon, 41,707, a new Aloha Bowl record. Just wanted to say, Harry, that the inside interior of that offensive line of Southern Methodist, Jackson, Campbell, and Edson are doing a great, or Edson are doing a great job against Griffin, the nose tackle, Kovaleski, and Larkin. They're blowing them back, blowing them back. You can pick up six yards per pop when you drive up in the middle of that line. You've got to credit those two guards in that center. It is a first and 10 SMU at the 40-yard line of Notre Dame. Mike Gann is not in the Notre Dame defensive lineup right now. Jeff Koontz is in at one of the defensive tackle spots. Jackson, the center for SMU, just called for a new football. First and 
down at the Irish 40-yard line. On the option play, the pitch back goes to Dupar. Well read by Notre Dame. Troy Wilson coming up from his defensive quarterback to make the hit on Jeff Atkins, who picked up nothing. It'll be second down and 10. Atkins set a Southwest Conference freshman rushing mark at 973 yards last year, breaking the mark previously held by Earl Campbell of Texas. Second down, 10 SMU. Atkins and Hashaway are the running backs. Here's Atkins. He has, he fights his way inside the 30. Griffin finally catches him from behind at the 18-yard line, but a great effort by Jeff Atkins. going to be a fine run. Watch it right in here. The little cross blocking by the interior of the line. Here comes Atkins. He takes a shot right there. He bounces off. He keeps his feet moving. He gets by a couple of defenders. There he is. Big number 94 coming in there to make the takedown. Watch Banks right here now. Let's see what happens. He's coming down the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's in good position. He gets taken on right there by number, I think it's eight, Gary Hashaway. Knocks him down. And that's Ron Weisenhofer who he runs right through. Here's a pitch back to Reggie Dupard, who squirts his way close to a first down inside the Notre Dame 10-yard line to about the eight. SMU with a three-point lead, 7.09 left to play. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is the TCS Metro Sports Television Network. KPLR TV, Channel 11, St. Louis. Gary Faust concerned on the Notre Dame sideline. The ball is at the inside the Notre Dame eight-yard line. First down and goal to go SMU. King calling the signals. King on the option play. Here's Reggie Dupard. He's down to the two-yard line before he is brought down. Reggie Dupard to the Notre Dame two, where it'll be second down and goal to go. Southwest Conference as a sophomore and junior. Watch Reggie right here now. A little fake in here. You pull back into Hashway right there. You flip the ball out off of Banks. You come in. There's no quite. There's Ballish is there to make the stop. Good execution again by Southern Methodist University. Second down and goal to go. At the two-yard line of Notre Dame. Reggie Dupard touchdown Southern Methodist. Dupard from two yards out of the Mustangs have opened up a nine-point lead with the extra point coming. We have just 6.13 left to play. Dupard, who had 16 rushing touchdowns during the regular season. Nothing fancy here. You hand it off to Dupard. You're running behind Campbell and Roy Dunn right there. He's in for the touchdown. Every key situation so far in the second half, when SMU has had to come up with a down yardage for a first down or a touchdown, they've come in behind Roy Dunn and Andrew Campbell. Good blocking by those two big horses up front. Dale Hellestray will snap. Dodge Carter will hold. Brandy Brownlee will attempt the extra point for SMU. It's spotted. There is a whistle, however. SMU. Yeah, dead ball foul. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure on the offense. Five-yard penalty. On the offense. That'll move it back five yards on the conversion attempt. Let's look at the touchdown by Dupart again. Let's watch Reggie Dupart, number 21. The junior running back, tailback. Here he comes. He's coming inside. You see the fine blocking in there by Roy Dunn, 79, and Andrew Campbell, 67, and he just powers himself right through. That gets over Joe Johnson, number 27, the strong safety for Notre Dame. Five-yard penalty, not costly on an extra point attempt. Bradley puts it up, and it is good. And we have 6-13 left to play in the third annual Aloha Bowl game. From Honolulu, Hawaii, there is a timeout of the action with the score, SMU 27 and Notre Dame 17. We'll be back right after this. 
opened up a 10-point lead and Tomas Esteve will kick off for Southern Methodist. The deep men are Tim Brown and Alonzo Jefferson for Notre Dame. It's a very short kickoff and it's going to take a funny bounce and that's a loose ball and Jefferson alertly picks it up and gets to the 21-yard line. Close to a turnover for Notre Dame as the ball took a wacky bounce and a Mustang was down there close to recovery. Well, I think Alonzo Jefferson was waiting for it to bounce sideways and go out of bounds and get a, a, a re-kick. Ball of the 21-yard line, first and 10 Notre Dame. They trail by 10, 6-12 left to play. No Jackson goes wide to the left. Joe Howard is wide to the right. Here's a pitch back to Alan Pinkett and Pink to the short side of the field down the sideline, knocked out of bounds by Keith Brooks, and he appears to have the first down. Pinkett to the 31-yard line. He'll be close to a first down and has a first down on a gain of 10 to the short side of the field. 50 yards, 3 minutes, 15 seconds, and only 7 plays. That's probably the closest that SMU has had to go. They only had to go 50 yards to score. All of them rushes. It'll be 1st and 10 Notre Dame. They have it at their own 31-yard line. Erline calls the signal. Here's Alan Pinkett running again. Alan Pinkett has another first down. Notre Dame figuring SMU looking for the pass. They rush Pinkett twice. Ron Anderson making the tackle, but Pinkett picking up 13 more yards. He's hurt a little bit, too. He gets hurt at the end of this play. There he goes off tackle. Good block by Brooks. He's an excellent blocker. Shows enough time for him as he gets through there. He gets by Joe Phillips, and I think he banged up his right shoulder. Alonzo Jefferson is coming to take his place. Pickens picking up 134 yards. Here's Alonzo Jefferson in the open. And Jefferson all the way down to 35. Anthony Beverly making the tackle of the Mustangs, obviously looking past. Anthony Beverly uh, leads the team in individual uh, sacks uh, or tackles, 60 of them. Alonzo Jefferson, fresh, going up a big hole up the middle. There you see Beverly, number 31, catching for behind. So Notre Dame first and 10 of the SMU 35-yard line. Inside hand on to Mark Brooks, and he pulls his way for about five yards before he's dragged down at the 31 of SMU. Five uh, minutes to play in this uh, at the end of the game. Notre Dame, the clock might work against Notre Dame. They have to get two scores to tie, a touchdown, a field goal, or two touchdowns to win. It'll be a second down and five call for Burleigh. yard line by nose guard Jerry Bull. Second down and nine. Notre Dame to the 20 yard line of SMU. 428 and counting. SMU leading by 10. Burline hands off again. Here's Alonzo Jefferson and he squirts to about the yard line before he's brought down bring up a third down and around six to go for the first down and one of the SMU players is down on the field. It's a good play. SMU nose guard ball. Jerry Ball number 34 had a stunt on. He took an outside charge and what Kelly did is he just drove him right out of the pitcher right there and made it created a very very big hole in there for Jefferson. Can't tell who the Mustang player is down. at the SMU 17-yard line, certainly within climate. 
hand off to Brooks, and Brooks fights for about three. Jerry Ball in on the bottom of the tackle. It's at the 14, and Notre Dame will send in the field goal unit. Alan Pinkett, the report is, will not see action the rest of the game. The fine tailback for Notre Dame has a separated left shoulder. They could finish the day with 134 rushing yards and also caught a touchdown pass. This will be a 32-yard field goal attempt by John Carney. Kevin Kelly to snap. Miracola puts it down. Carney's kick is in the air, and it is good, and Notre Dame pulls to it in seventh. 3.15 left to play in the game. SMU leading by a score of 27 to 20. John Carney was 17 for 19 in field goals this year. Tax out of 30. SMU leading 27-20. Just 3.15 remaining. SMU is looking for the onside kick. They have nine men between the 45 and the 50-yard line. Does have time to kick off if they could stop at SMU drive, and he's going to kick it deep. It's going to go into the end zone. So SMU will bring it back out first and ten at their own 20 yard line. With only two men back there. Might have been a good opportunity for that pop up punt that's a free ball or kickoff. But it'll be first and ten for the Mustangs at their own 20 yard line. Notre Dame, an important defensive series. If they are to get the ball back, they must stop SMU, which they haven't been able to do. The Mustangs leading 27-20. There's a scoring drive, 65 yards, a little under three minutes, nine plays, nine rushes, no passes. Most of that picked up by Alonzo Jefferson filling in for the injured Allen Pinkett. Don King will try to keep this ball on the ground and use the clock with 3.15 left to play. And off to Atkins, and Atkins picks his way for about two, and that's all to the 22-yard line. Stopped by Robert Banks. And four yards, another outstanding year for the junior tailback. Also caught a touchdown pass. Good citizens of Sterling, Virginia. Make its hometown, raise funds to send Allen's mom over to the Aloha Bowl. She's enjoying her time here in Owen. Force Notre Dame to take some unwanted timeouts. They want to, their ball carriers want to stay inbound. Absolutely. Ashaway and Dupard are the setbacks behind Don King. Dupard on a misdirection. He gets about three yards. Looked like he had some running room, and then it closed in a hurry, and Notre Dame will stop the clock again. With a third down and five call, Notre Dame using their second timeout. They have one remaining, 2.59 left. Field position with not a lot of time and only one timeout. It's going to be tough. Here we see Don King talking with Coach Bobby Collins and his staff. Of course, this is the key play of the game. Notre Dame having used two timeouts in this drive. If they don't stop them right here, then they're in serious trouble with one left. A timeout of the action with a score. SMU 20, South of Notre Dame 20. We'll be back right after this. A critical third down play at the third annual Aloha Bowl. Third down and about four and a half to go for the first down. 2.59 remaining. SMU leading by seven. King calling the signal. He'll call on Dupart, and he does not get the first down, and Notre Dame will get the ball back. Mike Kovaleski making the tackle of Dupart after a gain of just a couple of yards, and SMU will have to punt it away, and Notre Dame will have two minutes and 53 seconds on the clock to do something with it, and Notre Dame apparently used up their last timeout. Carter will kick. Joe Howard back in solo safety for Notre Dame. His up man is Troy Wilson, and Notre Dame should come out of this with decent field position. Player to watch on this is number one. He's on the right corner. Mike Haywood, he blocked one punt and partially blocked another punt this year. Don't want to take a chance of roughing the punter, and so Haywood does not charge. And oh, this time he picked a great time to get away. Inside the 20, and Joe Howard to the 22-yard line. Dodge Carter would not putt it well. Got off his by far best putt of the game. 
A 53-yard putt, a three-yard return. Great punt by the young man. He changed a couple of uh, the, earlier in the ball game. He didn't get some good hang time or good distance, but when the Mustangs needed him, he booted that one out there. Great punt, Dodge. Hard line. It'll be first down and 10 Notre Dame. No timeouts remaining. They have 242 with which to work. Play action. In trouble is Burline. Gets it away. A wobbly pass incomplete intended for Alonzo Jefferson on a screen. He was under severe pressure from Anthony Beverly. That'll bring out a second down and 10 for Notre Dame with their own 22 with 236 left to play. I think what we may see here is that SMU going into a double rotation zone defense. They're going to play zone both sides of the wide side of the, the wide sides of the field. Force Burline and Notre Dame to come down the middle with the ball. And they're going to blitz the linebacker most every down to keep it honest, to keep the linebackers, to keep the defensive or the offensive players honest for Notre Dame. They try a draw play, and Alonzo Jefferson gets up to around the 27 yard line, a pickup of only around three or four. And it brings up a third down and six call. Now, Notre Dame hoping to break a, a long one on that run, but they didn't. Will go to the air up the middle, deflected and nearly intercepted, deflected by Tim Breen, the free safety of junior from West Orange, Texas. It was intended for Tim Brown, and he got double coverage. So Notre Dame is down to their fourth down call, a fourth down and six call. Here's Berline uh, passing. He throws this ball like a bullet. Doesn't let the uh, player run into it. He was double covered, and Jack Snow isn't that the toughest place to to throw on uh, third down and long up the middle? It's difficult when you got a guy like Tim Green, 17, as you see him right there. Green made an excellent play. He sat back, red, waited when the ball's near. He reacted very nicely. Notre Dame down to their last gas, fourth down and six. Pass to Joe Howard, and he has the first down at the 34-yard line. Stopped immediately, but how? Picks up a crucial first down, Notre Dame. Ball at the 34-yard line. Quickly, Notre Dame out of the huddle. They have no timeouts remaining. 2.06 left to play. Burline, play action. Looking upfield. He's going for the bundle. The middle. Jackson inside the SMU 30-yard line. We could see that coming all the way up here. Burline dropped back, and he had Milton. He was he was staying with him all the way. Let's look at the fourth down play. Notre Dame's last gas when they stay alive. Well, Burline's looking, looking, and he hits Howard over the middle. Catches it in the air, but his forward progress had the first down. It'll be second down and 10 Notre Dame. The clock is stopped with 1.57 remaining to be played. SMU leading by 7, 27 to 20. Got Reggie Ward in at the wide out on the left side. Let's watch him. He's a burner. He is. But they hand off to Alonzo Jefferson, who gets over the 40 to about the 43-yard line. It'll be third down and about two to go for a first down. Jim Green and T.D. Briggs making the stop. Third down and about one. Erline. Erline in trouble. Gets one away. He's got his tight end. Ricky Gray. First down in SMU territory to the Mustang 48-yard line. Keith Brooks making the tackle for SMU. Good boys by sophomore quarterback Steve Burline. Yeah, he hung in there and he found Ricky Gray, the senior, who came on late in the season to catch uh, 13 passes. Burline straight back, looking upfield. Fires one. It is caught at the 31-yard line by Tim Brown. It'll be first down Notre Dame. Reggie Phillips defending. The clock will stop until they move the chains with 122 left to play. Yeah, they said he didn't get out of bounds. line doing an excellent job of pass blocking. SMU only rushing three men. There are that four or five of them that time. In and out of the grass 
the tight end, Mark Camaro. Keith Brooks defending on the play for SMU, but it'll give Notre Dame a chance to huddle and stop the clock with 1.15 left to play. Steve Berline, only a sophomore, completed 60.2% of his passes this year. That broke records established by Angelo Bertelli and Joe Theismann. A second down and 10 call. 115 left to the third annual Aloha Bowl. Burline in trouble. He's going to scramble. He has some running room and he will get inside the 20 to the SMU 18 yard line. Clock is moving, but they'll stop it to bring the chains up. A first down run by Burline. Reggie Phillips made the tackle. 107. Bobby Collins and Jerry Faust in a thriller at the Aloha Bowl. Upfield got the tight end Mark Pavaro for very short yard. The game of three. Keith Brooks made a great hit of Pavaro. At the 15 yard line, it'll be a second down. Brooks, a six foot, 214 pound junior from Andrews, Texas. The clock is running with 49 seconds left to play in the game. Second down and about eight for a first down. Burline. Fires toward the end zone. Ooh. Guess was the intended receiver, but it was closer to the Mustangs than it was to the Irish. Third down. SMU's doing a smart, smart thing in that secondary. They're dropping back. They're keeping everything in front of them. Once the receiver makes his break and starts to come back, they're coming back, but they're not coming back hard enough that if they should have to tackle and miss, it'll mean a touchdown. So they're keeping everything in front, keeping that little bit of a cushion. If they're going to get it, let them catch it in front of me. They're going to make a good, sure tackle. Well, Notre Dame two wide receivers, Reggie Ward, Timmy Brown, in there. They've got speed to burn.
is SMU 27 and Notre Dame 20. We'll be back right after this.